biology, chemistry, and physics, three of the most important subjects you're going to take at GCSE. If you're even considering a career in anything related to STEM, you're most likely going to have to take one of these as an A-level. But despite all of that, most people don't know how to study for each of these three subjects. After watching this video though, you'll have a clear blueprint as to how to get a 9 in each of these subjects. All you have to do is watch and implement. Firstly though, we need to talk about a very important concept. One of my core principles is that every subject is different, and despite chemistry, biology, and physics all being quite similar, they still have unique elements and I will change the way we need to approach each subject. The best way I can explain it is using a spectrum. On one side we'll have memorization and on the other side we'll have problem solving and then in the middle of course will be a 50-50 mixture of the two. If we wanted to put each of the sciences somewhere on the spectrum, where would they go? Bio will go here, closer to the memorization side, physics will go here, closer to the problem solving side, and then chemistry will be somewhere in the middle. And what's the point of this? Well, it gives us a clear breakdown of the nature of each subject and that will help us craft a studying technique that's optimized for each subject. If a subject relies more on memorization, in this case biology, we're gonna have to focus more on memorization techniques, such as using flashcards and how to use them effectively. Flashcards are the best way to memorize anything. And if a subject has a large element of problem solving, in this case physics, we'll have to rely more on doing practice questions. Doing practice questions is how we train our brain to recognize and remember patterns that are in the exam questions. And so when it comes to the actual exam, we've refined our brains to make them problem solving machines so we can solve the questions easily. Now, like we said before, each of the sciences is a mixture of these two elements, memorization and problem solving. And each of the three sciences has a unique ratio of these elements. And so, if we want a studying technique that perfectly complements the nature of each of these three subjects, we should look no further than the NFT method. The NFT method is the backbone of my academic career. I've used it all the way through my GCSEs and then A-levels, and I'm still using it in university, and it's never let me down. Now, I've talked about it before, but if you want a really detailed breakdown of the NFT method, then you could check out my ultimate guide to acing your GCSEs. It will be the first link in the description. But to explain it briefly, it stands for notes, flashcards, and then test questions. And the following is how I used to use it in my GCSEs. We would learn a couple of topics, let's say two or three topics, and then we do a unit test that tests us on these topics that we just learned. That's when I deploy phase one, which is making notes. i would go through my chosen source of content. You could use a textbook or a study guide, but I usually just stick to YouTube videos, such as free science lessons. And then based on this content that I'm going through, I'll try to make notes. I'd also have the syllabus open to make sure that the notes I'm making are actually relevant. That would usually be enough for the unit tests because they wouldn't be as hard as the mocks or the actual exams. But sometimes I would do practice questions just to familiarize myself with how the questions could be laid out. I would then go and smash my unit test. Next, throughout the year at some point, I'll probably have a mock. And that's when I deploy the flashcard phase. And so I would go through the same content again. That could be the textbook, or YouTube videos, and then I'll make flashcards. I'll also look back to the notes that I made for that topic and cross-check it to make sure that everything is relevant and I haven't missed out on anything. Once my flashcards are made and everything is covered, I'll then do some practice questions again just to get myself ready, and then I'll go and smash my mock. And then finally, in the two months leading up to the actual exam, we deploy the last phase, the test questions phase. Now this is my favorite phase because ironically, it's when you do the least work. We've already spent a lot of time going through the content and then making notes, and then going through the content again and making flashcards. And that's a form of space repetition, which means that most of the content that we need is already memorized. We don't have to go back and relearn it. All we have to do from here is just go through the flashcards again just to make sure we have everything 100% memorized and then bang out practice questions. Any exam questions that you can get your hand on, do it. And the beauty in this is that while everyone else is stressing because they have to relearn the content from the beginning, you're chilling. All you have to do is just do some practice questions. And that's because you've already put in the work previously. We talked about how biology has more memorization, physics has more problem solving, and then chemistry is just somewhere in the middle. The way this might manifest itself in the NFT method is for bio, for example, you might spend more time going through flashcards and making more flashcards to make sure that everything is 100% memorized. And then for physics, there might be less flashcards, but then you have to do more practice questions to compensate for the problem solving heavy content. And then again, chemistry is just somewhere in the middle. If you correctly implement everything we talked about today, then you're on the path to getting a nine in each of the three sciences. 